Yeah. Well, this is culture train, and we're selling right away. As you know, uh, our train does not use uh, fuel, doesn't use oil, so it moves on even when everything looks uh, so stagnant. Uh, today, we're loaded. We're very loaded. And I'd like to say that um, last week, we had this huge pall of darkness over uh, this nation, not because of the kidnapping and banditry that is going on, but because we lost quite a lot of our people. And uh, Professor Kole Adiodichola, thank you very much for being around last week to help us to pay tribute to some of our people that we lost. Uh, you know, last week, because we were dealing with younger people who, who have taken the exit, we were not able to say that um, Sir Victor Waifo and uh, Professor Yusuf Grillo, two eminent, eminent Nigerian artists, also left these shows. It's, uh, it's, it's very painful when you lose uh, uh, these uh, libraries. You know what they say about uh, an old man, that when an old man says it in Africa, it's actually a library that is burnt. Uh, we're losing these iconic figures in our art, our legends, yeah, uh, it's more painful because we are not really documenting them enough. And I hope that what we're doing will be able to ginger quite a lot of our scholars, uh, such as Anko, to be able to talk, uh, uh, to, to start to recognize them and to make sure that we continue to, to remember them. But we remember them for good, not for ill. Uh, and then for the younger ones who are living, we hope it will uh, stop there. Uh, and that we would not reverse to, I mean, when I mentioned uh, 1997, Dr. Kolya, you remember what happened in 1997 when we had quite a lot of exits and we had to do uh, some kind of propitiation where we said, why there's so many people exiting, taking their exit and just going in the direction of, uh, of the graveyard. Uh, people were either leaving the country or they were going in the direction of the graveyard. We hope that I'll stop for now. So let's celebrate life. Bruce Onobrakoya, Professor Bruce Onobrakoya was 89 two days ago, and the celebration is still very much in the air. As a matter of fact, I, thought I was at a program this morning where tribute was paid to him. I uh, wish uh, Bruce Onobrakoya a uh, long life, even at 89. <laughs> we hope that uh, uh, we, will, we will continue to, to relate to him because he's still producing. In fact, he's in Agbara till now still mentoring young people. That's the kind of story that we like to hear. And we hope that uh, we'll continue to, to enjoy uh, its presence in our, in our midst. Having said that, let me welcome formally uh, Jerry Adeshewo, Yomi Oyekomi, uh, Godwin Okondo. I've heard so much about Godwin Okondo. I'm told that you are one of the young theory as writers in town and that you are so good. If your boss could speak that way about you, it means that you are good. Thank you very much, uh, Godwin Okondo. You make us remember when we were young too. We were once Thank young. Thank you very much. Culture, I'm trying to get the full name of culture, but um, it seems that um, uh, <laughs> I can't get who, who is behind that name. I've asked him to rename so I can do proper recognition uh, for him. Uh, please, uh, if you're hearing me, culture, that's where you spell your name. I would like you to just uh, rename yourself and then we can uh, proceed. Right about now, uh, you know, things are happening. And the reason we do culture training is to be able to attract the attention of our, our friends, our colleagues, our brothers, and our countrymates who are outside of this country to know that apart from the story that you hear about killings and kidnapping and all those bad news, that there are things happening in this town. And I'm happy to say that uh, in this house, I have some of the people who are doing a lot of things. Jerry Adesho, I hope you, I, I wish you would show your face so I can first of all pay tribute to you for all the things that you do. Because yesterday, you still hosted us to an international conference where all of us were present. Uh, Jerry Adesho, uh, a Rija uh, company, theater company, is doing quite a lot between Abuja, Lagos, and all of them. And uh, so we appreciate what you're doing, Jerry. And we'd like to continue to encourage you to continue on what you're doing because you have the option of staying out, but you insist on staying here. So having said that, uh, well, I'm waiting for Jerry to come up. Uh, let me just continue to pay uh, tribute to people in the, the, my cultural uh, uh, roundup, as I, as I call it. Uh, last week, we were discussing about reading culture. 
And I didn't have enough time to pay full tribute to Dr. Kole Adiodutola because we were reminded yeah. on the program yeah. that he actually started a reading project as way back as 19, is it 1996 or 1997? that he took people around the country to discuss about reading culture. So last week when we brought someone, a guest, who was talking about a project promoting reading culture, we were able to, we were reminded of what uh, uh, Dr. Kole Adiodutola was doing before he did what my friend Tony Akashio said he did, I ran away because uh, this, <laughs> this country has a way of actually killing dreams. But then he took off, but then right there where he is, he's still doing it. Uh, he has not allowed that to to, um, to to push him off of the radar. So we appreciate those of you who are doing that. Yomi Oyekomi used to and do dance in this town. In fact, long before Kembe became a normal thing, Yomi Oyekomi was wearing Kembe. He was the one who wore Kembe to the others and be teaching us dance and uh, choreography and co. Yomi is in London. And I know that when Nollywood was hitting London hard, Yomi Oyekomi was there to do uh, to do justice to that. I was privileged to be there. I uh, even hosted quite a lot of our Nollywood people who, who came down there. And uh, yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm very excited to have all of you in our say. And what is happening outside of this country? Right about now, because it should be eight o'clock in Israel now, in Tel Aviv. The Nigerian play, The Road, is opening in the next uh, two minutes or so in Tel Aviv. The Road is a play written by Professor Wale Shoinka and is being directed and produced by a friend of Professor Wale Shoinka who has been there for a long time. But unfortunately, they will not be able to join us live because the play is opening about now. Uh, it's been produced and directed by Jaffa Schuster. Uh, and um, is guest choreographed by Chef Gwadefila in Tel Aviv. I tried to see if I could bring them onto culture train directly when, as we are here now, but since the play is opening, they are not able to do that. So what I've done is to do an interview on audio, and I hope we'll be able to uh, play it right away. We will take a short break so that the, the person who is going to share the file will be able to get it there. But the road is opening and it's running tomorrow today and tomorrow. The command is today, and then the play will also be on by, by tomorrow. So Yafa Shusa is for the Tel Aviv stage, Israeli stage. He's the, she's the one directing and uh, producing the play, which is cast. And you'll be able to hear from, me, from her what they have been able to do with that play, including even transporting an actor who is an Israeli actor here, Roya Man, from here straight to uh, Tel Aviv to be part of the play. And then Chef Grandefila is there to do the choreography uh, for them. So I've been able to interview them. They are on, uh, on audio. And we'll try to see if we can share that and then share the, the video too. So this is Culture Train on Spirit of Nigeria Radio where we bring the diaspora up to speed. Please bear with us as we listen to the voices from Tel Aviv. It goes uh, goes back to to reading uh, to reading Wallace studying him and uh, I'm so fascinated he's uh, like the greatest writer today on on earth and there are many many big writers all over I go to um, I feel very strongly for it and mainly for in the road I did already at the line and the jewel. In Hebrew and uh, a dance of the forests, which we met, I think, in Lagos and in Tel Aviv and all over the state of Israel, and even in Sweden, I did the dance of the forests, and uh, and of course in Lagos. And the road is about the backyard of life, and I'm very much connected to this idea of the backyard of life. I'm connected to it as an artist and also as a political activist. 
uh, in Israel, I'm a political activist, and uh, the backyard of life, sometimes we, say, we think the others are living in the backyard of life, but sometimes it's us in the backyard of life, especially artists <laughs> in the backyard of life.
which, which uh, and, and, and so we have a very good connection. And because one more thing that I like about the road is that uh, Professor Schenker wrote it for men only. It's, it's not a politically correct play. And I like it. I like it that it's not a politically correct play. It's only about men and the misery of life and the way men deal with it. But uh, as I, with a connection with Zonia and uh, asking her to, to come and participate and be part of it, so she's doing the role of the police man as, a poli as, as an Israeli police woman. So this is fascinating in itself. Like the connections, the cultural, you call it cultural trade? Ah. Cultural. 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 No, cultural. Culture train. Oh, I'm not sorry. Culture train. Now, uh, was corrected by Shegun here. It's culture train. That's culture reality. And uh, I think the road is an amazing play. And I'm surprised that it was not put on stage more. Uh, because uh, I, I only recently I found out that it's not as popular as other plays, but. For me, it's very catchy, very catchy. It's very obvious that the lion and the jewel has clear characters. It, it's like a, a, not a triangle, a rectangular. Like you have uh, Baroka and CD and the entrance of media to the life of the village. Uh, in the line, it's a comedy in a way. While it's not, it, it it's a great play, but very understandable. You can really. Like one of our best musicians in Israel wrote uh, original music to it. And okay. we did it in a G. So the line of the jewel, for sure, it's like uh, <laughs> okay. clear. But, but my approach, you asked about my approach to the road, how I direct it. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's first of all to find. Uh, the actors and combined African-Israeli actors and Israeli non-African actors. And for example, it was it's a great, great, great uh, pleasure for me that one of our best actors in Israel has done everything almost, told, agreed to do the professor in the play. He, his name is Doron, Doron Tavori. He's done hundreds of plays. He's very uh, well known in Israel and it was I was surprised he agreed to do it. And uh, and what he said to me immediately after he read the whole play in English like he's a, he's a translator as well. He said it's the best play I ever read I ever read or ever did. Of course I want to do it. So Yeah, he's here, and I want to thank you as well. And my best regard to Professor, uh, with a lot of love, with a lot of love and appreciation. Thank you, Jaman.
interesting that I find interesting is that a Nigerian play written from um, a cultural background being translated in um, Hebrew. For me, I found that very fascinating because there are certain idioms and codes that are peculiar to different cultures. So for me, it was important to see how the Israelis would relate with those Characters who in Lagos Palace would call um, Agro, you know, um, and to see if this is a common thing with humanity. So I came with an open mind. I came like a blank canvas, and that any kind of painting that comes in there um, is welcome. But I was pleasantly shocked, you know, pleasantly shocked because I found that the core of the message remains intact. So it's like, we are still staging it in Nigeria, you know. So uh, it made it easier for me to approach it like I would approach um, our works. Yes, um, there's no, we don't have lots of dances in it, but somehow uh, we, we were able to infuse movement in certain areas of the performance. I, I found the actors and other artists very open to this approach, yes. <laughs> First and foremost is the language. Yes. First and foremost, I mean, obviously, is the language. You know, um, translations. So it, 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 it's being on stage and trying to follow intuitively what is happening. So language as a verbal language has failed in this regard for me. So it is more of visual language, which makes the work more impactful for me. Because now I do not have to rely on um, do I understand what they're saying? No, I only need to feel the atmosphere, look at the expressions, look at the actions, and be able to say, oh, this is what is happening right now. Yeah. So, and that is, it, it takes us back to the idea that art, art is the universal language. If what we, I mean, if well put together, then it gets across to everybody. Yeah. So I'm sitting down, for instance, I'm supposed to raise a song and I need to get a cue. Um, may if the Q says bring me the water, I'm just using it as an example. Bring me water, and I'm supposed to raise the song. How do I know that it's bring me water without bothering to understand Hebrew? <laughs> so what I do is rely on 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 my, my movement background, and then rely on the powers of the, the actors themselves to convey meanings. You know, so as they are saying it, they are showing the intensity of each of the scenes, um, which makes it very easy for me to relate it, but I must confess it's also a kind of challenging. I mean, it's obvious because the language is that different. Yes. Okay. Yes. The difference is obviously, again, like I said, in the verbal, verbal language, and that's where it ends. In terms of human reception and the um, internalization of information, I think it's the same thing, you know, which boils back to the fact that the that I guess humanity is not aware of or is running away from that after all said and one after all said and done it's one human race ent entirely you know we are the same we don't have a language for instance if there's a, if there is a scene in where you have to laugh in the play in what language you don't laugh in Hebrew or in Yoruba or in German <laughs> laughter is universal so 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 is the language of the arts. Um, the marked difference is mainly the verbal, 
the, the, the yeah, verbalizing the the emotions in the play. But apart from that, I think we are all just the same. For instance, you know, in Africa, when we speak, we speak with so much gestures and all of those things. You know, we raise our hands and you know talk to the audience. That is not common on the European stage because you know they're a bit, they, they don't raise their hands and raise, you know, point fingers and blah, blah, blah. They don't do that all the time. But in Israel, I found that which it's almost the same thing with the way well, we go, you know. Thank you very much. That was the uh, the interview earlier today with uh, Yafa uh, Sulsa, the director of the, of the play, and Shtel Gwande Filadi, guest choreographer who is currently there, and you could see him even on the Seychelles Boon on stage. The lady playing the policewoman is Roya Man. Roya Man is, lives in Lagos, but she's Israeli. Uh, but she's an actress uh, on, on screen and on stage. I did not even know that she was there until I saw it today. Two other Nigerian artists were supposed to be there. But you know, uh, uh, Tose Tume could not make it. Uh, just like uh, our... Um, our dear Uche Bobo Odogu, one of the best drummers around there, they could not make it simply because of the traveling problem that we have currently. I think we have to continue to design ways of uh, producing theater across continents so that you may probably not need to be there physically. Uh, it's been done, but I know that we can generally do more. Uh, Jerry, when we, when we have time during the play, I'll ask you how this can be done, because I know that you've created quite a lot of conversations around how theater can be produced across uh, the borders uh, uh, in this age of pandemic, because we're not sure. As one, pand one, one variant is going up, another one is coming in. We just uh, um, move into Delta. Delta now is moon. I don't know what is coming next, <laughs> but we'll be we'll be getting there, Jerry. I think one of the things we will do in future, near nearest future, is to bring you to actually speak yeah. on some of the experiences that you have gathered in the course of uh, creating those very very important conversations, uh, which I also know that uh, Dr. Kola Adi to have been part of. Because we talked about tourism, he's very particular about linking culture and tourism in this age of the pandemic. Yeah. Now, I'm going to take a short break because we want to, this, this program is in segments. Our cultural training is in segment today because we've just finished the cultural roundup. We will now be moving to rediscovering and how art helps us to rediscover and as well help us to repackage and to, to you know, to reenact our lives uh, for empowerment because we'll be talking about uh, Oshin Oshobo. And uh, this way, I want all of us to be Part of because we have festivals here. As I said last week, we have so many festivals here, but which of them are we really pushing out there? But this year, I just starting from last year, decided to get something right. And it's not because I know the person who is doing it. Well, they brought in a consultant whose focus is just about making sure that Oshon Shobo goes beyond the, you know, we've been with it for such a long time, but it doesn't seem to be moving. I, I, as a reporter, I covered the show, show so many. And I was always saying maybe the stack of 10, 15, 20 foreigners, they will be there and we call it International Festival. No, I think that the festival had the potential to be bigger, to go bigger. And uh, I'll be asking uh, uh, Dr. Kole to make a contribution later into this conversation. When we come to, how do we make our festival to go beyond just what, what we consider them to be, we say they are international. Algungu, say Algungu is national. It's still the same mode of fishing, <laughs> of uh, the same people running into the water and thing. The people have been talking about mountain climbing, but when you go there, my hair in the kitchen, you still see virtually the same thing that we've been doing all over. And I'm, I'm wondering, is this the way this festival are going to continue when we have young people now who are so fast on technology? In fact, they, they are citizens of technology. They live in their phone. They are not citizens, they are not tied to lands, like probably our own generation. These guys have moved on, and but we don't seem to be getting there. But let me first of all go into the mood. I, I think I will not take a break now because I've lost some time. Toye Yarulogu. So yeah, look, is actually my boss in this studio. In fact, somebody said, Baba, room. <laughs> now, I said, since last year, 
they seem to be changing the dynamics of packaging. Because as I said before you uh, join us now, we've been worried about the way tourism is being packaged. And the pandemic actually brought it so close to us that tourism everywhere was shut down. But people were still making money and still making, it's not just about money. They were still making some impact. About, but here, it's like we were locked down, we were locking totally. But then, Osho Oshobo, what have been your experience in the last year? What are we doing differently with your intervention now as a program consultant to the festival? All right, thank you very much. I, I think um, I need to clarify this. Okay. In the heat of uh, the global pandemic last year, Osho Oshobo held. Yes. Um, yeah. And that, for me, was a bit surprising, even if I, I, I say so, because I wasn't of the conviction that a lot of people will still troop out to celebrate the Ashwin Festival in the year 2020 in the heat. Well, yes, in the middle, right? Yeah, in the it was October, uh, August. Yes, August. And that, for me, sent a very strong signal about the people of Oshobo. Uh, and Osho devotees and worshippers. Osho Shoko is not a social gathering. It's, 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 it's the fulfillment of a pact between the people of Osho and the goddess of the river. Last year, the only thing that was missing uh, was the foreign content because the airports were locked, so a lot of people could not come. But this year, they still came from Brazil, from Portugal, from America. And um, unprecedented turnout of people, even in the rain, you know, in Yoruba, they say, Oshoshobu, which when it rains doing that, you know, it's a confirmation that, yes, what you're doing. <laughs> because there's myth, there's mystery, there's mysticism in Oshoshobu. And it's not just like any other festival that you could cancel. Last year, I spoke with His Royal Majesty, the Atari of Oshoshobu, and they wrote, in Oshoshobu. And of course, we didn't have uh partners last year because a lot of people did not want to identify or support you know uh that kind of crowd or turnout in the heat yeah. of covid it was part of their corporate social responsibility but this year of course we had our regular partners and a few more joining us okay. to, to 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 celebrate on sugar, sugar. and you know it's a two-week festival mm -hmm. so uh which uh climax is at uh a Friday, where the uh, Aruba takes, you know, all these exactly. sacrificial offerings to the river. If, if that's what I want to get, forgive me if I'm dragging you back. Last year, you still had Oshun the way it should be. It's only the intentional content that was missing. How were you able to manage that crowd? You know, there's this huge crowd that leave the palace and they go to the water. With there's no stopping the crowd. That's the honest truth. So how did you do it? I mean, they, they would not even respect the mask and all of that. No. <laughs> <laughs> the representative of the minister himself, even this year, could not get out of his car for like 30 minutes. He was wondering what was happening. Some people had masks. Obviously, had masks. Some people who felt, well, they had been vaccinated did not, you know, bother. But in 2020, yes. there was no way we could manage the crowd, that's the honest truth. Because these people are coming out of a strong conviction. This is religion, it's not cultural. It goes beyond, it's a cultural and religious festival. And something that strikes me, and I like to say this every time, is that well, if you are from Oshobu, whether you're Christian, Muslim, everybody believes in Yeye Oshu. Mm. And that's what makes a difference. So I see people with hijab coming, I see pastors coming, I see, you know, they believe in it, and even as, pardon me, and you may not, should not slap me, as dirty <laughs> as the water was because of the rain and all of that, people were still taking the water to go home, including some of my staff. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, 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 it's out of conviction and that belief in, you know, the power of the Yoshu. And if you ask anybody from Oshobo, they'll tell you a few things that uh, they believe have come their way because of... Uh, Yosho, for example, Oshobo being the capital of Oshun State, yeah. they credit it to, <laughs> to Yosho, <laughs> yes, and that everybody <laughs> was waiting for decision. Ife. Yeah, everybody was waiting for Ife, okay. you know, because of the university, you know, the the oh, near that time was strong and powerful, and uh, you know, so many, so many things. And from way back, they also believe that uh, Yeye was able to send back some of the uh, the enemies yeah. where they were fighting during the battle, and 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 so many other things that they would attach to. 
So they, they, they are truly convinced about it. And that's why there is no stopping them. Uh, it reminds me of some people in Brazil and in Portugal where, you know, they are Catholics, but every home has a shrine. Mm -hmm. And um, this year, because, you know, COVID was there, we still have to do a live transmission online for people to be able to witness it uh, in spite of the time difference. So uh, Shoshubu was being streamed live and people could, you know, be a part of okay, it without okay. physically yeah. be, be, being present. That's the influence of technology. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. All the glamour, yeah. all the glitz, the drumming, the pomfair, and all the rituals, mm -hmm. you know, were still present in spite, in spite of COVID. I, I like to make special reference to the uh, Atukpa, Olojumeri in Jinobu, where, you know, the lights, the, the lamps, and, you know, KBC has to come out three times mm -hmm. in the course of the night. You'll be amazed at how many youths you find there, old men and women. And um, it's just a part of their lives, you know, mm -hmm. in Oshobo. So there's no stopping them, COVID or no COVID. Okay. You know, uh, there's no stopping them. But, but, but in, your, in your own assessment, I know you made a lot of input. What was the driving content for the, the success that has been achieved this year? Let's even forget about last year. This year, you're able to bring, in the, the, bring back the international. Yes. Um, what was the was it program? Was it in terms of resources? Was it in terms of the enthusiasm of people who were locked down and then they had to yeah. lock out? <laughs> if, if you ask me, it's just back to the same thing that I've been saying. It's just that strong conviction, that belief. It's a religion for them. It's not. Um, ah, but they be, they've been with it for decades. And then, yes, yeah, they're always trooping out. I don't yeah. know. I, I so without being immodest, I also get comments like, you know, during our own tenure, things have been improving. A lot of things have been happening. For example, in 2019, we introduced the uh, work for Oshun, you know, which was like more sensitization, mobilization, and of course, bringing all the ethnic groups in Oshubu together. Uh, this year, we did a symposium, uh, Oshun Shubu discussed for the first time, Oshun Shubu Festival discussed. Yes, yes. And we we're looking at how Nigeria or the Yoruba culture can be packaged. Uh, better, you know, for international acceptance. And that was, you know, sponsored by the Center for Black Culture and International Understanding. Yes. Because some of the things that the foreigners appreciate, we've discarded them, you know, and that's what drives, why would an American leave this country to come to a show, show book, you know, and yet the people that are here don't even sincerely or, you know, appreciate the extent to which, you know, it can, you know, drive them in terms of their, their religious beliefs. Yeah, we talk more of blood of Jesus, you know, I also deny. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, those guys who are out there, they would leave their country, pay money, wear the Ankara in groups. Oshoshoko is the first place that I would see white people, Oyibo people, with incision at their backs. I'm not talking of male or female, I'm talking of male, female, adult, the young children. You know, let me say they were not see bear, not see bear. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I've never seen anything like that before. Okay. You know, so we're talking about, you know, uh, worshippers and devotees. We are talking about, you know, people who believe in, in, in the power. And, you know, even beyond Oshobo, Oshobo is celebrated in some other parts of mm. the world. You know, yes, they have their own yeah, yeah, and all mm. that. Yes. You know, so it, it, it goes beyond you know, the, the, the social gathering. No, the social gathering is just, you know, of course, you know, you can't rule that out, especially where you have a lot of youth. Mm -hmm. So people have, all the OPCs, they, they have their tents and their canopies, they travel from all over, you know, then the Ariano Kakapo is there. Oh, and they went, okay. you know, all of them, I mean, they would have their camps, you know, okay. hotels are fully booked, you know, all kinds of things. You know, okay. It's like, it's like, it's like a pilgrimage, mm. you know, every year to the river. Okay. You're sure you're about to be able to do that. Okay. I don't want to monopolize the crime because I know that, you know, as I mentioned, uh, someone like the, Dr. Kola Dutola has been dealing a lot with uh, tourism. Uh, so he might have uh, yeah, one or two. He's one or the two man that took me to Trinidad and Tobago. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Yeah, Dutola, do you want to ask our uh, exciting trip to uh, Trinidad? Now? Yeah, go ahead. He remember. He has not forgotten <laughs> our exciting trip to Trinidad. No, okay. I've not forgotten. And we're still going back for more for a few more things. <laughs> well, tomorrow is um will be marking the 40th day of the passing of um Chief, the one and only Chief um Leroy Clark. 
the yeah. artists you didn't get to meet. But um, that's a story for another day. Uh, you see, the good thing about um, having a brother Arologo involved in Oshun Shogbo and helping to lift it is that very soon, because of his knowledge of how government works, mark my words, German, you can write this down that I said it. It is This is my prophecy, that he is going to bring in the Ministry of Education with, the, with what he's planning. And we're going to start having um, school children go on tourism in a way that at the end of their semester or their term, as you give passports to their fathers to travel abroad, these kids will be having passports showing the different festivals they have attended. Mark my words. Okay. You, you would see that soon and very soon, this will be happening so that they will, their English, when they say, write a composition, apart from all of these things, these abstract uh, titles they give, they're going to be giving them titles like, um, my Something visit degree. to Osho Oshobo. Yes, yes. It will be part of the essays they would now be writing. And they would not be thinking of what to write because they have been there. Mm. And when these kids leave secondary school, GSS 1, SS 2, and they get into the university, it will continue. They would, they would, it's not, it's going to be cross religious. Yeah, this but then the, the, the question I would like to ask is, uh, and this also goes to to you, uh, what was responsible for the, what I can call the seeming stagnation of um, Oshun Shubu, just like other festival, all this? Is it the absence of uh, professionals who could go in there and put the, uh, you, you know, we belong to the same group on the tourism thing, that where they travel and talk, people say they are not involved. Mm. They say they don't even involve them. The airlines are not involved. And, you know, and if you don't bring all of this together, I, I, I don't want to provide the answer. I just want to put that out there. I understand what you're saying. But if you don't put all those resources there, education expert, for instance, tour operators and co. So, I mean, what, what is going different in uh, in Oshun Oshibo? Well, I, if, you, if you ask me, it, it stems from the fact that I come from a cultural or theater background. That's the honest truth. The way I see it is different. I, I first of all told my client, who is Kabisi, that Kabisi, hey, the dark image, you can't do this thing. You've got to allow government to come in to participate because they sit down and guard it jealously. I mean, we are oh, the traditional institution. Yes, yeah, the traditional institution. Mm. So having worked in government, I was able to assure him that no, it's not going to be hijacked from you. Okay. Now, what you find also is that it depends on leadership. Um, different leaders react differently to, 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 to culture uh, and tourism. A lot of our governors are more into infrastructure. You know, they don't do much of cultural tourism. That is where money is. <laughs> I don't know. Money is everywhere. <laughs> but I know that when I was in Oyo State, you know, I did quite a number of festivals from Amala Festival to Ashofi Festival to the Twins Festival. You know, because I understood the game. This is my area. This is my top. I'm a theater artist myself. And I knew that you need a spectacle. You need to package it, you know, which is what eventually made them call me to come to Oshoshubo. So that is very, very important. Who is driving what? The second thing is that we have challenges and we're beginning to resolve them. And I like what uh, Professor Colin Dutton has said about, you know, that tourism part. You and I were just discussing German before we came on air about the Lagos Ibado trade. Do you know that people go from Lagos in the morning now to go and eat Amala in Ibado and they come back in the evening? <laughs> they want to see Coco House. <laughs> so what am I saying? We are also thinking, why can't we package school children, kids from Lagos, to go to Ibado, to go and see why it is it's called the pace setter state, i.e. go to Coco House, Liberty Stadium, you know, choose four or five, NTA, uh, University College Hospital. So the tourism part of it, but you don't need to wait for government. That's the honest truth. We are discussing with the, the Nigerian Wheel Corporation already. And these are the kind of things that would, you know, make cultural tourism thrive and prosper. We cannot wait for government. Government decision, you know, process is slow. Somebody needs to 
activate it. Somebody needs to, you know, give it like a kickstart. Something must just happen. Don't wait for God. Once you are doing it, government will begin to see mm -hmm. how it can benefit them. Mm -hmm. For example, the Osho State government also is at a loss as to how they would make money from Osho Shubo directly. For example, they were muting an idea of, look, why can't we say everybody pay one one thousand naira? I'm just giving an example, okay. you know, which was, I said, no, it's not going to work. <laughs> you take taxes from hotels, the petrol stations make money, the restaurants make money, you know, and all of that. You, you cannot do it. But it's also possible, okay, if it is well packaged, okay? And of course, there are brands that support, you know, because the put falls and presence is high. So you find a lot of people into doing beverages coming there, you know, to, to support, you know, a musician is on standby, you know, all kinds of things happen, you know, so that spirit of conviviality and mood, we just need to structure it and put it together in a more, you know, uh, how would I put it, in a more glamorizing way, such that, you know, because there are also a little some side effects about, you know, miscreants, you know, taking over and all mm -hmm. of that, which we've been able to put at bay, you know. So it's just about packaging. It's just about packaging and making sure you give it the adequate publicity. But cultural tourism in Nigeria, I tell you, if you're in Nigeria, you really don't have to go anywhere. <laughs> Nigeria is enough for you. Look, I was in Oyo State uh, for seven, eight years, if you ask me. There's a lake at Ado Hawaii. There are only two in the world, okay? It's a suspended lake, a lake on a hill, one in Colorado, one in Ado Hawaii. If you get there now, yeah, we, we don't even know the number of steps you have to climb because the steps are there, but it could be done in a better way. I know. Okay. So I'm just giving you examples everywhere, mm -hmm. all over Nigeria. There is no state that doesn't have something cultural, something tourism that should be able to drive people down, you know. And of course, you know, the way it is if, 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 if you don't put the business elements to it, it, it doesn't really become attractive, it all becomes you know, there are quite a number of festivals that you know. Yeah, I'm going to ask a lot of future. Yeah, yeah, a tourism. lot of festivals. Uh, like I said to you earlier, the bad of people are talking to me. And look, you can't be going to Osho State to go and package their festival. Why are you not packaging? Uh, okay, but a festival or a festival for us and all of that. And I'm saying, look, listen. What is that unique thing? Osho Jumbo has content. It was a unique thing. Okay. So if you want to do okay, but let's sit down and let's make it glamorous. Let's leave it from the Aboke. Leave Aboke. Aboke will do its thing, which is normal. Just like they do. Aruba will carry out, you know. But then, what are the other side things that we need to put to add to make it? Kiss. Yes, a buffet, you know, take your choice. So if you want to do the spiritual, go. If you want to do the dancing and concert, go. Mm -hmm. If you want to do the Akara, if you want to do the Amala, you know, and all of that and all of that. So those are the things that we need to do to make sure that cultural tourism, of course, we need a lot of infrastructure. Mm -hmm. You know, in 2019, when I was going to, yeah, you are going to Shogo, they kill people on the road, the road is bad, uh, you know. A few of those hurdles we need to cross, but certainly we have the raw material. We have the raw material to be able to promote okay. cultural tourism in Nigeria, or tourism generally. Mm -hmm. yeah. in, in terms of documentation and uh, preservation, what, what do we need to do? Because if you're talking about packaging, if the Ocean Shogo has not been properly documented in such a way that I can then be presented to the world because you have to speak to a certain language of, yeah yeah, of presentation. You, 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 yeah. Need, you need a lot of enthusiasts you know like professor Colley would be to come <laughs> around you know the first night I sat for the hey, uh, I was with uh Yemi Elebu Ibo Araba you know I was uh, 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 I just sat out there very lost you know but I had my phone and I was just recording but it was very exciting, you know, something different. It was like a theatrical performance. Okay, you, that's you, exactly you know what I'm saying. Because I'm happy that we have a theater uh, director. But we was done in a house, you know. There was no light, no light you yeah. know, so many, so many things, you know. How Jerry is listening? Yeah, there, there's so many things <laughs> that we mean? can do. Yeah, just like uh, Iwakopo is the first, which is the cleansing of the town. You know, Kabeji dances round seats and all the chiefs come to pay homage, you know, like Wawajuba, mm -hmm. you know, it, 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 the spectacle can be packaged. It can even be choreographed. Okay. You know, I, I, for we example, have a choreographer there. Yes, you know I, mean? I, yes. I hope you are listening, even please. At Oshoshubu, we need to extend the groove. The sitting, you know, is, arrangement there is not adequate. We mm -hmm. need to build a few more things. We need to put big screen so that not uh, the, 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 the river doesn't become attractive. We need to break up the crowd, you know, and all of those things. So people can even be in the, 
in the center of town and still be seeing what's happening there, you know. Yeah. So these are some of the things that as we go along, we're going to, it's all about packaging, packaging, yeah. packaging, making it attractive, creating yeah. the spectacle that would bring somebody you know, all the way from Brazil or the United States, you know, okay. even if you are not a worshiper or a devotee or a show. Yeah. You, know. Uh, you, you know, as we were talking about uh, making it look like it's such a cool package. Yeah. Professor Ahmed Yeluma, I mean, of course, you know, our teacher in uh, directing, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he just joined us because he's in the second uh, segment of this. The, I, I've always believed that actually if you bring this trained professionals in. There's a way they can change the dynamics of what they're doing. And that is what you're, not because oh, you're yes, sitting yes, next yes, to me. Yes. That's the kind of thing they can do. But when the traditional insurance say, oh, we're guarding it. And then that government that you mentioned, yeah. I'm afraid of government. Why are you afraid? It looks like anything that government touches, uh, the, they bring the, down. The good luck, the good luck for us, just like uh, good luck, is that, no, no, okay. is that, you know, I've been in government, so I know how to speak their language. Okay. I know how to understand, you know, make them see the point and understand it. And you see, government always likes a, you know, a role to play. You know, when we did the work for sure, I made sure the commissioner was at every event. He was the one who came to declare it open, you know, and you will come to, you know, just like look, all the partners, we have a stakeholders forum, everybody. We choose a day, they come to pay homage to KBC, they give him gifts, they do all of those things, and they state their financial contribution to your show. show. But it, like I said, it's also a spectacle. It's yeah. also, it, it, it's something. So you, you, I can mention names, nobody, nobody. So <laughs> MTN comes, you know, Nigerian Beerus comes, you know, Grand O comes, Sima Shinabs, you know, they do Are You Unlock More Festival at a sponsor. People are eager, they want to win, you know, they do cooking contests, you know, you know, local food, you mm. know, and all of that. So for the two weeks, the, the entire town is just bubbling. Bubble, bubble, bubble. And then they, all, all these partners, they have their tents. Okay, if you are doing your NIN, if you are doing your SIM card renewal. If you, oh, you can know, also do that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. They're not even selling the Peleve, they are selling all the Peleve and, you know, What's the sachet, that? sachet for, you know, oh, things okay. are happening, the musicians <laughs> are playing, you know. So it, it's one big, you know, theater. Let me put it that yeah. way, you know. Yeah. And of course, you have a ready audience. You have a ready audience. Yes. One of the lessons I learned this year was that we need to get for the Atopalojuma in the logo. We need, we need to harness the crowd. We need somebody who is going to be a musician for that night that can sustain the crowd. You know, even Kabir was they were, they were they actually lift, lifted him off his feet. The security man to be able to do his ritual of going yeah. around three times because he comes out three times. I think one a.m. I think three thirty, mm -hmm. then five you know, and all of that. But the crowd was so huge. But unfortunately, we were not harnessing them. So we had some people blaring their speakers. It wasn't control. It oh, wasn't structured. Okay. So okay. I've spoken to These some of my challenges. partners. Yes. Like, Look, listen, I have 3,000 youth for you. If you are selling your private, just come and take, take care of that night. Okay. okay. So you pay for the musician, one nice Fuji artist, or you work like we work with the Osho State Fuji Musicians Association. Mm -hmm. Let's put them on stage. Create something that will engage the people over the night. So there's less attraction without lamp. Okay. Or to the lamp, you know, where Kabez is going, and everybody wants to follow, you know. And it's like when Aruba is going, everybody is the, the how do you call it, smarting their fingers over their head, you know, which in Yoruba is like, you know, over my head, over my head, you know, you know, and all kinds of things that happen there, which I mean, thank God the theater, it's it, it's it's drama on its own, okay. If you know, okay, so drama on its own. and I can tell you, drama, I'm a Christian, but I've seen it, it's not spirit, speech, they catch them live. And if you are going to a show, you go, don't eat fish the day before. You still have me water. Don't, don't, don't <laughs> eat anything. Don't drink malt, anything made of maize and all of those things. If not, I am telling you, spirit will catch you. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Kole, I didn't tell her, you have your hand up. <laughs> this yes, I, 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 I had my hand up because you did mention a point about fearing government. At the same time, I would like to invoke... Um, the, the woman who wrote about audiences, African and traditional audiences, um, um, Karen Baba. And it is what is under, underneath our reason for not wanting to pay for things like this. Our lives have been structured in a way that we got entertainment free. And when commercialization first got introduced into Oshun Shogbo, I can tell you a lot of the Africans in the diaspora complained of the um, pollution of something that was very spiritual. And the 
the advert companies went to town. The only thing I didn't see branded was the Aruba. If you allow them, they were going to put Shinab Shinab branding on even the Aruba. There should, and look, um, when you go into the Catholic Church, you don't see this kind of pollution. You can sell whatever you have outside. And this is, this is just my own fear. That is there any way in which we can also rein in? We need the commercial people. We need their branding. We need Shiman Shimap everywhere. But can it be done in a, in a, yes, even the Pelebe, <laughs> in an organized way that it does not appear to pollute? Modernity and tradition are always at each other's neck. And there are people who, who would rather that we, we, we make it sacrosanct. I, I am of that belief that we can commercialize it. There is, you would allow me to, it's just two minutes. There's a guy in South Africa who uses people's homes in South Africa. Um, his name is Shipiwe. Shipiwe would organize that the local residents themselves begin to have a stake in, and they, they can, at the end of a festival, tell you how many runs they have made by using their homes, either for artists to display their paintings in. And people will come, they buy, and a part of it. This is a kind of commercialization that I would ask for. They can brand the uh, Keke Marwa, brand the, um, the, what do you call that, um, mo Okada. moped? Yeah, Okada. Brand them specially for that day. Those who want to ride for the Oshun Oshogbo, they would have to take a particular kind of either jacket that they'll be wearing. These are ways in which I think money should be made, but keep that grove sacrosanct in a way that when you get there, you still feel that you are in contact with the, the ancestors that have not been polluted by Pelebe or they have not been um, <laughs> polluted by MTN. I find them as, as, as cultural pollutants. Okay. And th th this, this, th this is just me. And okay. you know, the, the question you, you post is, how can we have Oshun Oshogbo 2.0? How can we lift it from what it was? You talked about the tour operators. The tour operators, are business people. You, you know the saying that money will go to where it is treated best or when, where it is needed best and it will stay where it is treated best. It is the okay. same thing. The, the tour operators have not found a business. Tour operators that we have in Nigeria want handouts. They want everything prepared for them and given to them. Like, okay, take, go and make money. We, because we haven't reached the point in which we, the tour operators in Nigeria can be innovative, can create things themselves, they want to be led by the nose. And it's because it's a business that is fraught with a lot of risks. And they're not working yet as a team. Every tour operator wants to get a boss of their own. When the association of tour operators can actually uh, invest boss. in one boss, boss. decide on the, the, the festival, the calendar of festivals in Nigeria. Thank God, Nushewe has already done one. It is not something that you think. It doesn't come on you. The only festival I know that is not systematized is the, your festival. But every other festival, you know the time of year that it will happen. So these two operators you have talked about, unless somebody, they want to be invited. And let me tell you, if you dare invite them, you will pay for their transportation. You will pay for their <laughs> feeding. And you will give them some uh, keske at the end of it. <laughs> and you might not even get anything. These are, okay. You know, these are my people now. These are yes. our people. So let's say the way it is. 
And I know well, you. Well, thank you very much, uh, Doctor Kole Adi Um Yeah, yeah German. I, I think I don't know. I'll, I'll get back to you. I just wanted to announce that uh, Professor Ahmed Yerima is here okay. for his own segment. So, and I've not begged him for another five minutes. So that we because Jerry too wants to speak. So All if right. you want to speak now, no. Jerry should speak. No, let now. Jerry speak. Let okay. Jerry speak. Hello, Jerry. Okay. Uh, hello, sir. And uh, yeah, very Jerry. Good. Yeah, very quickly, because uh, Professor College already spoke to a lot of some of the things I needed to, you know, uh, latch on. Uh, however, talking about Ocean Shobo 2.0, I think it, 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 it's more than necessary at this point in time to make that happen. Uh, he has said a lot about the need to keep it secret, but then there is also that possibility to create a festival within that festival. I mean, like a French festival where I had earlier on talking about the musician, talking about having a th theater performances, going, I mean, a whole lot of other activities that can help drag people, you know, and um, to that state. Incidentally, just yesterday, uh, I was with the uh, Nanta president, Mr. Israel Ebo, on a visit to the uh, president of Nanta, that is the uh, travel agencies, National Association of Nigerian um, travel. Yes. And it caused a lot of these issues. Uh, talking about the need to create calendar and uh, they have said that, look, they, they, they don't produce. They are only a conduit by a link to, to products. <laughs> and so when the product is not there, there is little or nothing they can do, which mm. we now also argue with them for the look, you can create the product. We, we just mm. like Prof said now, we told them, look, you can create the product. You can look at Oshun Oshobo and think of what innovation you can bring to it as travel. Because people want to come to Nigeria when they have a good reason to come. To come. Not to talk about domestic, uh, you know, tourism itself. So, so I think that it is, it is very, very possible for whoever have the ears of, you know, organizers to the point that theater performances, musicals, writing, uh, you know, all, a whole lot of activities can be created around Oshun Shogo as okay. it lasted such that, you know, you have other activities that will bring in, you know, that will bring in the money. So that when it is the period for the festival itself, I mean, it remains, you know, what it is. And then people who believe, who, who want to uh, see the ancestors, who want to, you know, do, they can do their thing, I mean, with some level of uh, sacred Secretness. So, so I think that uh, we, we need it's something we need to look, look. Okay, when I say we now, I don't know who is the we, but I mean, <laughs> we, <laughs> I, mean uh, we, I, I think from what uh, Toya Rulugu said, he, he wants to actually bring a lot more professionals, and that's why he kept on talking about theater artists, training. Yeah. And anyway, you can respond to that. Yeah. No, yeah, I, I thanks, think, Jerry. I think we are all on track. I mean, you know, we have to take baby steps before we start working. Um, yes, a few of the activities that they mentioned are already there, but because of COVID, a lot of them could not happen because also uh, we didn't have enough funds. Um, you know, the children also used to do a lot of, uh, uh, I think, football matches and all of that. But one that struck me this year was the celebration of the for the third memorial of Durolaji Four, yeah, which was during that period, and um, it was an inter-school, you know, theatre performance by. Uh, or should state, you know, which of course that was the finals. And I sat down there and I saw, and I was so convinced that theater will not die in Nigeria. Mm. The guy who won the, 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 the best actor, young boy, you know, uh, it was KBSC school, uh, of, uh, Abolari, the school came first. Look, they know culture, they know language in, that, in those parts. Don't let us judge Nigeria by Lagos. So no, no, those, these are young boys and girls, and they were doing more me, they were doing all kinds of performances. And uh, with nice blocking, choreography, dance, and drop, school, school, secondary school, JS uh, and SS, you know. So that, that gave me uh, a lot of hope. And more important, you know, we need to do things like that, you know, around um, the yeah, festival. Yeah, what what he has called the yeah, fringe. Yeah, exactly. What they call yeah. the fringe. So yeah. the, the, the concerts are already happening. You find out the purists with their tents and, uh, you know, so, well, we'll keep getting better. Do let me take uh, oh, oh, okay. much of your time. Well, thank you very much, uh, Toya Rulogun, and everyone who has contributed to this. This is still Culture Train on Spirit of Nigeria Radio, where we bring the diaspora up to speed. And I wanted us to take a break, but I think I don't want to hold uh, Professor Yelima for long. He told me that I had some other things to do. Now that we're here, Prof, good evening, sir. 
Don't worry that we have good. to generate you because you are our teacher. Uh, our no, <laughs> no, good, good, good evening. Good evening. I, I, I was enjoying the discussion because you know I used to run the national theater uh, carnival. Yeah, the Abuja yes, carnival. The national. In fact, what happened to you? Our and, national carnival, carnival, yes. Abuja carnival, sir. What happened? Yes. <laughs> Nigeria. Abuja Carnival died because of the sense of commitment, of first understanding why there was a carnival. And, and, and I think with time, um, people were thinking more of um, uh, the event and the gains from the event rather than the spirit of the event. Hmm. When um, yeah, President Obasanjo appointed me, I asked him, My, Mr. President, sir, what do you want from this carnival? And he told me he wanted a cultural carnival that will unify the country. And I think that was, that was the, the, the basis of it. So for 2006, 2007, when Rushewe took over in 2008 and I came back and did it again, it, 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 it was, that was the spirit. That's why it succeeded. And immediately we left. Um, it was, it was, that was the end of it. So, you know, um, uh, that was the problem with Abuja Carnival. The, mm. the people and those sponsors, once they see that there is no commitment, at that time, uh, Cecilia Ibru, um, 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 Adegbola of um, Intercontinental, um, 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 Elumelu, um, Dangote, Dangote took over the, 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 the what's it called? The Doba. And mm. so all the Emias would come. And I, what I did was pick an Emir, like Emir of Zaria was the last general of the, of the Doba. Emir of Zaria, Emir of Kano, Emir of Mitika. And they would come and bring their horses and Dangote would sponsor it all. But the problem with sponsorship is once they see that the thing is beginning to lack its, its importance and its relevance, they, they, they don't want to spend their money on useless projects. And I think it's the same thing with, um, with, um, with Oshun Oshobo. Oshun Oshobo, the day I was, I was overwhelmed was when I saw a yo. A yo coming to Oshun Oshobo to dance. Cross water. From Lagos. <laughs> Yes, Ayo, Ayo, Ayo is, I don't think we know the meaning of Ayo. Ayo is, is for mourning. It's, it's a ritual dance for those, for burials, for remembrance. That's not what Osho Shobo is about. Osho Shobo is a, 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 and so once you bring Ayo from Lagos, it means you do not even understand what it means. Yeah. yeah. You, you, you get the point. You, you mm. ruin the whole essence. In fact, there'll be a conflict of the gods. You, you understand? So yes. we, 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 we and and then what we used to do also was get MTN, like he suggested, the, the coordinator, get yes. MTN to handle the night, and then you have the night. If you call Said Oshupa to come and perform, or Pasuma Wonder, or K1, the the whole of or, um the whole of or, or, or your or your or your state, in fact, all the environs will come and oh, sure. and it will be bigger. But mm. like like the like uh, uh, Professor Chola said, you must separate the ritual essence of that play, the purity of it, because that is what people are coming to look for, look at from abroad. Those in Bahia are not coming here to see Pasuma Wonder; they want mm. to see Aruba. So once that difference is there, and you get the dichotomy between the social aspect of the of the of the festival and the what's it called the 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 ritual itself. That with Elebu Ibo and the others doing what they are supposed to do with the Kabiesi, then you 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 kill two birds with uh, uh, so many birds with just one stone. Mm. That's just my contribution, sir. Wow, thank, thank you. you very much, Prof. I mean, this is why it is good to to, to have you make up come into the house. You know, I was not even thinking about the Abuja carnival, but the, the, what you said about I know you are here for Aremu. But what you said about yes. the commitment, is it the commitment of government? Yeah. Because Toy, Toy spoke a lot about the government showing enough interest. Or is it the commitment from the technocrat that they bring in to continue to run the festival? Because we continue to have people change. I, I think, Go on, sir. Yes, sir. I think, I think the first thing is that government never has a commitment. <laughs> government has a political will, interest. And once we get that right, then we do not have a problem. Government, the person in charge just says, I feel like, I think I should. I remember when Obasanjo left and Yaradwa took over. Yaradwa was not interested in Abuja Carnival. And so he sent good, um, um, goodwill, um, 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 good luck Jonathan, who was then the vice president. I had to go and convince him to come. 
And so as the idea started dwindling, it became, the onus now came, came on the technocrats. And again, the problem we have with, in Nigeria is most of the time the technocrats are related to those in government and they have budget ideas and budget returns and budget thoughts. And once you do that to an art thing where people are just coming willingly to enjoy themselves, to, to pay obeisance, to, you, you, you cannot get, get it right. Because I remember in Abuja, people will come artists and say, I'm my big name in Hollywood. I want to be part of this. And I say, sir, there is nothing you can do here. You, you know, are you in Port Regatta? Are you from the Delta States? Are you from this? Are you from that? And once they say no, I just say thanks for coming. Because I knew that what they wanted was a festival that would build around them. They say, I want to be the king or the prince of this festival. No. So, you know, the technocrats need to find the right people. Even if you know that you are a pharmacist and you are a what's so called and you are the commissioner for whatever, and the position says yes, you have to look for those who know what carnival is all about. And then you define the carnival and then you look for areas that, 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 that work. I mean, whoever brought a yo killed. In fact, I just stayed in my house in a day. I've not bothered to go and see the thing after three years because <laughs> I felt there was no need to go because the people handling it do not even understand who Oshun is. Why is Oshun, Oshun you know, Oshun worshipped? And what did she do for the people of Ushobo? If you know the history of that, then you begin to say you want to plan a festival and a ritual around that. If you don't know, then you are just going to be guessing in the, in the darkness. Mm. And you know, in another year or two, once the white people bring the dollars, see that first we are not settled already with this insecurity in the country. But once they see that the people um, who are organizing do not have a focus, they'll, they, they won't come and you lose mm. everything. Mm. Thank you very much, Professor Ahmed Diyaluma. Uh, there's Thank a question you, Jerry is asking there. If I go into that, we will not leave this topic. And I want us to go into the uh, those two plays that we have uh, promoted. So Jerry, maybe before we finish, we'll, we'll get to this. But let me get to the uh, the main uh, theme for today. Yeah. Uh, something is happening recently that, uh, I mean, something that we've been asking for and it seems to be yeah. happening. And for three weeks, I, I kept on promoting this. The staging yes. of Aremu yes. and Awo. These yes. are historical, uh, these are plays about historical figures or political figures, people who are in our life. And yes. one of them we can even still relate to. Uh, yes. Prof, I know some of your own plays have been, have dealt with uh, historical figures of Warawe, uh, yes. Tahiru. You know, you've done yes. quite a lot in that. Now you have to deal with, do a play that's about yes. someone who is alive. Yes. How did you survive doing that? Because you must have had some session with that fellow, that uh, <laughs> Ebola. <It, laughs> yes. <laughs> In fact, I, I first have to um, thank um, um, uh, Joseph Edgar, who, who wanted to do Aremu. I don't know what idea, how he came about it, but he felt he wanted to do a play around um, a President of Asanjo. And then he gave me a call and, I, and he said, uh, President, um, the Professor, I know you don't know me, but I want you to do a play. And I said, on whom? And he said, I am um, Obasanjo. And I said, that's going to be tricky. And it was tricky. But what I wanted was first, I, I had been opportuned to work closely with him in government. He was the one who helped us. You remember, German, when we were trying to save the National Theater? Yes, he, was the one who took it, he was the one who took it to the market. And he was the same person who said, OK, I'm not selling it again, <laughs> which, which, which was good news for us. But the, the, the best thing was, I know that he, he's also a very principled person, uh, which people see as difficult. And I said, I will write this play, but you must arrange for me to meet him. I must talk to him and know what, what, what he's thinking about it. And so we met. And the way he was talking, I was beginning to draw up my character. And um, also, I started, um, um, I read his books, all the books that he's written. And especially in the last three um, 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 volumes, he talked about his life. And I went to Wu. I'm, 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 I want to say I'm also related to the Oba Adoesan Yadusumu, who is the Oba of Wu. And I, 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 I went there, I, I saw the place, saw him, went to his own ancestral home, which is all broken down. And then it now inspired me. How can mm. such a great man come out from this 
this small place that is just growing and finding a face. And that was when I wrote the first draft. And like you rightly said, he took the first draft, he read everything, like almost like Uvorawe and Obay Redua, who took the pen and marked everything. And he took the pen, marked everything, changed a few songs, changed a few names. And before we knew it, we had a script. So that was how the script was born. Mm. Okay. <laughs> I, I imagine that when you met with him and you had to, you, when you took the draft to him, uh, yes. from what we know of him, was he using his barrel and saying, no, 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 you can't say this. But, you know, this was a president, when he was president, that they took a speech to him. Yes. To read. And he got to yes. read and he said, no, I'm not reading this. They said, I should read that. I'm not reading <laughs> <laughs> that just yeah. I'm no, just I, I, no I, you know he had he had also he had also commissioned me when I was in government he had commissioned me to write Tafida on Yaradwa his second in command and and so um we had worked together and and he saw my play on Atahiru uh, which um, 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 um Sultan Machido uh, commissioned so he, he knew um he knew my um what's it called my my precedence and and so he he respected that and, and so what, what he did was he took the script and, and read it before I came, because I sent it through his PA. He read it uh, before I came, made all the markings, and then took me page by page what should be kept, what should not be kept, what should be left. And we had, we had fun. He was laughing because I was throwing little jokes here and there, especially the song on um, uh, um, um, uh, women. And the women, I, and he said, No, how do you want them to remember me as I say, Just say, Obiri, Obiri, just put Obiri, Niya, me, Obiri, Lomo, me, Obiri. And, and, and I, I respected that. So, he, he, in fact, he made a very substantial contributions in, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in the play. And, okay. and uh, yes. Okay, yeah. well, thank you very yeah. much, uh, Prof. I'm still coming back to you. Uh, let me welcome yes. Maki Dea Deniron, who is also uh, directing, he wrote and is directing uh, Awo, which is opening uh, tomorrow. I actually had to drag him from his uh, dress and check. But Prof, uh, I don't want Prof to disappear yet. Uh, hello, Prof. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Hello, Prof. Yes, I'm not going anywhere. Oh, okay. Now I want to ask about the process of producing the play itself. You have to assemble the cast, and um, yes. I mean, go through the whole Yaza process. And and so, what, what were the what was the experience like? And were there challenges that you faced? Because some of them, you, some of them were playing real life existing. Uh, it's like yes. writing a biography, and, and the person is yes. there, and you're writing the biography. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it was interesting. I um, the Duke of Shomolu Productions um, had the structure, um, and and it was it was uh, they had their 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 uh, musical sets. They had um, a venue. They had everything. So what we did, in fact, um, 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 Mark Day worked with me, and um, um, Williams uh, also worked with me as assistant directors. And so what we did was first get the, um, the artist to understand why we were there. And then um, we now did the budgeting and then we did um, uh, the fee discussion and then went straight to, to and I would, what I would do was um, uh, block a scene because I'll come all the way from Ede and I'll block a scene, block one or two, three scenes. And Mackinde will take it up and clean it up and um, Williams would, would work on the others. And by the time I come back, we'll run the three scenes and then we'll work on the other scenes. And then music came in. And I think um, Yamisho Dimo also made a lot of contributions with the music. And But, 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 but what the artists did was they were excited. Um, some of them had worked with me when I was artistic director. And so they were excited to come back and work with me again, which was fun. But we, we because of this uh, very nice, um, relaxed atmosphere of um, mutual respect and creativity, we, we were able to work together as a team. Uh, I, I, and I want to thank Edgar and um, Duchess, uh, his dear wife, who, who created that kind of atmosphere for us to work and create. Thank you. Um, the next natural question, of course, yes. is um, the, the, now presenting the play, and you have yes. a live audience there. Not just yes. the live audience, the man himself came. 
which yes. will be different from our for instance only his children will be there probably <laughs> what, yes. what was the reception like for, by the audience and then with the man there uh because i wrote i read somewhere where they said he he, he burst into it was yeah he was dancing then he went into tears apparently when he got yes. to the scene about his mom and, and uncle yes yes but when, when i write historical plays i want to know the human being the essence of the person. I want to go beyond, he did this, he did that. Uh, and uh, from uh, when I was writing of Uram, I knew how uh, those who provide the information fabricate a lot and want you to see their person as the superhero. And okay. since for the first time I was meeting um, the hero in person, I wanted to know what's behind um, 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 uh, this, this, uh, uh, this general, this great man who's been president and, and head of state twice. And, and why is he so lucky? And in fact, when he came back from prison and he went for a Thanksgiving, he asked a question which touched me. He said, I, I don't know what I've done to God that he has favored me so much. And, and, and it, it, that question touched me. And I knew if I probed very far and made him face reality, he would, I would break him down. I wanted him to cry, and he did. And, and, and that, that, that was what I wanted us to see, the, 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 the human being, the humanness, the humanity in the person that we're all afraid of. Yes, he may, he's not afraid of anybody. He says his mind. He does, tells you what he wants. But at the end, there is one man hidden in that, in that flesh. And, and that's the man that the play was able to drag out. I wanted him also to know and to answer the question. I wanted the play to answer the question for him. Why are you so lucky? He had a good mother who, who doted over him. And like he said at that production, um, my mother, this play made me remember my mother. I, um, I, 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 you know, and, and that, that's when he burst into tears and found that his greatness must be shared, it must be shared. And, and that's what the play is all about. I, I wanted him to know that he's a super guy, but his greatness, uh, everybody contributed a little, little Mama Yabo, um, Sister Yabo, all the children, um, everybody contributed a little, little, little bit to make his greatness. And I'm sure he's aware of it, I'm sure. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. Um... Now, I will like the uh, people who are here, if anybody has a question for Professor Ahmed Yerima, uh, because shortly we'll be moving to Makinde Adeno on Awo, which is opening tomorrow. Um, fortunately, in this house, we have uh, writers, we have choreographers, dancers, we have theater directors, we have troop owners, we have tourism uh, consultants himself here. <laughs> Everybody who wants to throw a question to Professor Ahmed, yeah, it's not all the time you get prof to be to be present here. <laughs> I just wanted to ask a question from Prof. Okay. Since I was a five-year-old boy. And the question <laughs> I'd always wanted to ask him is: how does it really feel to be on the side of government? You know that um, we have people who write from the side of I need to put my hand up so that he can see that you need people who write from the yes. side of a people. Yes. And this is a man who for most of his creative years had been on the side of government. How does it feel? How do you navigate speaking truth to power? And like Walesh Wenka says, you wear the uniform of death and you want to speak against death. I always from. wanted to ask you that question. <laughs> well, I, I think German does have the answer of that question. Uh, German, <laughs> remember the, the silent gods? Oh, yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> and that was a um, uh, prof. That was the uh, um, a, a very major burden I had, um, especially with the Lagos press. Um, who did not trust me enough? As, that, how can this guy be writing, be working for government, get his salary from government, and then write a play that would be critical? <clears throat> I think, you know, and, 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 and that was what happened. I, I got my baptism of uh, fire um, with, um, 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 with um, um, it's the silent gods. And I want to thank my boss, um, 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 uh, uh, Mr. Bayo Dunaye, who also tried, who covered for me and, and was very good at that time. 
But then I, I, from what I did, working with government for 18 years, it was easy to understand that government are human beings. Government is made up of people like you and I, who also reason. Yes, they can be fanatical sometimes, but when they sit down, they also think. So what I do is um, I go into iconoclasticism, which is try and make them laugh. Uh, they are enjoying the play, almost like what Ubunde did uh, with um, um, uh, Yoruba Runu that Akitola had the ball, the ball of the time, only to discover that he was the victim and the, 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 <laughs> the, the, the hero being lampooned. And then said the police to go and arrest him. You, you get the point. So that was uh, another thing showing Ika taught us, that you could make somebody, in order to criticize someone, you didn't have to come and say you are stupid. Show him a little bit of stupidity and add the character that looks like him and then um, um, let him get the story himself. And so that is what has, has made me survive, uh, writing for government and also at the same time um, thinking of tinkling with the issues that come out of it. And I have survived so far uh, because I, I walk the thin line of, and I think the way government can leave you alone if they know that you are saying the truth. So research becomes a major issue in writing those plays. You have to research. Like, I mean, it, I'm sure if I'd written a very bad play, instead of crying and dancing and celebrating, President Basanja would send soldiers to go and pick me up on that two seconds. You know, especially <laughs> when we did it in his, um, in his library um, 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 theater. He would have just said, pick the damn fool up. And, and deal with him. Never should you write rubbish anymore. But mm. haven't, you know, haven't um, skated that uh, space very gently. It becomes an issue. And even when you write historical plays that the ancestors do not uh, um, 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 exist, like um, um, King Judge of Opobo, which I've just finished for the Opobo family, um, Olobo Shere for the Olobo Shere family, even um, um, Ovorame, the Obai Redwa was, was, and his brother, Prince Edward Kenswa, we're busy saying they want it this way, they want, and I say, but it didn't happen that way. And so um, once you stick on the issue of truth and then you are able to uh, do enough research, speak to the people who own the history before you don't add too much of yourself in it, but then you will get, you, you'll be able to survive um, as least as much, as long as I have. Thank you. Okay. Thank yes. you very much. Uh, talking about research, Shola Adeyemi, Dr. Shola yes. Adeyemi, uh, yes. East Anglia University, UK. Tony, yes. I'll, I'll call you now, Tony. Uh, he says, uh, uh, no question, but I'm amazed at the productivity of Professor Yelima. His prodigious capacity to write and read and the amount of research that goes into his writing. I also want to thank him for giving us all this place. And as you were talking, one journalist entered the house and he's taking note because you said you are writing for the Okobo family, I, <laughs> I saw him in scrap, looking for a spam frantically. Tony, I can show you. Yeah. please. Yeah. Okay. Uh, senior, senior Yerima. Oh, my brother <laughs> for life. You have, we have come <laughs> senior and junior. You are now my brother. <laughs> senior Yerima, good evening. Um, <laughs> good evening, my brother. The, the, the question, question I have. Mean. The, the, uh, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the question I have for you is. Um, in the in the Aremu play, yes. when you had no constraints, you know, yes. the type that you had while in service. Yes. Why did you choose the path of docu drama when you could have gone all through the way fictionalizing the account as much as you could? That's especially considering that the places where I mean that sparked most were places where you played the drama game, like that, uh, the mother going to kneel down to beg those three. I mean, it was so awesome that, you know, one wondered that if you decided to actually do a drama throughout, as opposed to some guy standing up and telling us, okay, something happened at something, something, you know, we... Yes. What, what, why? I mean, I just want to know from your own, from the perspective of the author, what what were you thinking? What the materials? Were the materials too many that you? Yes, the, you couldn't ignore them. And and I also know, in fact, um, the old boys uh, of our school, Baptist Academy, especially seventy one, seventy five, said, "My said, are very critical of um, OBJ." 
and 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 I, I was just watching what they were saying, reading um, the uh, the thread of, of 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 discourse, and I felt, look, I need to answer some of these questions. And the good thing about Obasanjo is that most of his activities that he did while in government, out of government, in between governments, all of them, even in prison, are documented. And he, he, the, the first place I went to was to go through that library. And I saw his prison, saw everything. And I even knew Auntie Stella, his late wife. And so it was, was, very, was very interesting. And I felt, look, people are going to come. And there are people like me who had the opportunity to work closely with him. There are people like me or people who have never met him, who are just coming with hearsay. For those people, Operation Feed the Nation, they want to know what it's all about. I wanted to educate them and at the same time entertain them. So I, I, I used those, which is that scene that you like and some of the other scenes. I, I had to add drama to docudrama. My PhD student will be very happy with what, what we are talking now because that is his area of, 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 of study. I, I, I had to add it because there is no way. Um, um, I wanted him to also sit down. There's nothing as boring as if you give just a talkative play about what I have already done. I don't want to know that. Uh, and that's why that's the area that made him cry. When he mm. saw what his mother did, because I mean, look at his uh, jail term. I just sat down in my study and I said, this man was sentenced to death, then to 30 years, then to 15, all within one week or two weeks. Then he, 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 at 15, he was ready to serve his time at 15. Then the man who was to sign the paper died. And then he's released. And, you know, it's, I said this is not real. I want, I want Yan Lagbada Lawasi, you know, and <laughs> and and, and so I said, yes, I want Yan Omega. You know, I knew that there, there was no way that, that you know, and 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 he, he himself, because when I see him again in the castle of the CAC, I begin to say, look, this man is it's a bundle of everything. How can an Ebora be a, a Christian? How can I never be? He's everywhere. And what amazes me about that time I was writing was when he went to um, Ilefe and Dobalet for the Oni and recently again went uh, to, to Wari and knelt down for a 37 year old man. And this yeah. is the man I speak to. I'm shaking. The whole country is shaking. Who can tell a, God, a president you are useless? You are not good. Which book? You, you understand? So, this is the complexity that I wanted to bring out. And I couldn't bring mm. it out in neat drama. I had to put a little bit of fiction. That's why, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank yeah. you very much, uh, Professor Yerima. Um, yes. I think you've really very well delivered this. Now yes. we go to Awo, written yes. and directed by Makinde Adenero. Uh, yes. Hello, Makinde. Can you start your video? Hello, mm. Makinde. Hello. Yes. I, I know you were in the midst of Riaza and you are still glancing at uh, so you are opening tomorrow. Now, um, Awo had so many colors. Maybe about yes. Sanjay, you can say, okay, he was a military man who then became head of state. Although from what uh, Yerima has said, now you have to go back into what the mother must have done, the, the little bit of everything. Now, Awo has so many dimensions. Politician, thinker, philosopher, uh, leader of Yoruba, you know, so many areas of, what have you, what have you done to really clip this expansive character and to present uh, in, in what you have written, to, to present a wholesome picture of, of Awo? Because if I was coming to the theater, that's what I'd be looking for. What area I'll become of interest to uh, the writer who is also directing the play? Hello, Makide. Yes. Okay. I'm Chen. <laughs> He's suffering from MTN siasis. M <laughs> oh, he's left. He oh, he's, not in, he's not even in the room. Wow. No, he just said uh, the thing just dropped off now. I'm sure he will, he will join us now. Okay. Uh, maybe. I ask uh, uh, Professor, just this is this is something that has been this, this man has been coming to meet me and he said I should ask you. His okay. name is late Sami Gwe. Hey, my brother. Do you know <laughs> anything that the family 
of yes. friends can do to the memory of this fantastic man. And when I say fantastic man, I'm sure you are one person that knows about the fantasticness of yes. Mr. Igwe, who, Sam Igwe, who played Mr. Peter Mirror in the song. Yes. Is there I, I, any, any plan or anybody that can do something to memorialize this great man? Yeah. I, I met him and I, I know some of the things he did for you and with you. And it yes. seems as if such men just, they just disappear like that. Makinde <laughs> uh, is back. Well, Makinde is back. So, so <laughs> Puff, uh, you can quickly address that and then uh, Makinde will... Um, well, I, I think I know some of the members of the family and um, I will raise it up with them and we'll get back to uh, Professor Chola <laughs> when, when, when they're ready. We are discussing something too. Yes, it's it's okay. Thank you. But, but it's a very valid question. So it also apply to all the people that have been losing. We're missing so many people now. They are leaving, and it's yes. so so scary. Yes, we need to really yes. get back to to the question yes. that he has asked. So, Makide, yeah. Adenio. Yes. Yes. So, uh, Prof, uh, I don't know whether you join us. They said you also had a role, uh, had some contribution to our moon, which you know is very. Very interesting. I mean, you were directing, writing and directing our one. You also went to join Professor Yerima in uh, producing uh, Aremu. I, I, I don't feel inspired. But I was saying that uh, Awo is a character that has so many dimensions. You know, it's spread here and there, everywhere. I, I was uh, saying that how, how were you able to bring uh, a wholesome Awo character uh, in, into the, onto the stage? Uh, first onto the cold print and then onto the stage. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, okay. <laughs> Maybe you go oh, off yeah, the and we you don't listen me? to the audio. Yeah, we hear you now. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. You can hear me now. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, for me, when I first got the call to do this, the very first thing, I mean, all those challenges of this multidimensional area of this man's life. But one thing stands tall, the leadership quality. And what are the support pillar for leadership quality? And if you check Nigeria at the, at the age, what seems lacking is those leadership quality that we really have to learn. So I took that. I looked at all of those who are characters of that age, apart from how all the colleagues and all of them in politics. There's no how you want to talk the story of Aulawa without his politics. There is no how. But there is one. So that gave me uh, the inquisitiveness to dig further. What would his romance life be as against the political life. And that leads me on and on. The home, the wife, what are the elements that support leadership quality for every leader? What are those elements? In those elements, you begin to find mm. that helps you to dig into the home, the marriage and everything. And that became a very good tool because then it helps to so, allow Sorry, we're, we're not hearing you again. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, can you hear me now? Do we hear you? Yes. Okay. I was suggesting if, if the MTN is a problem, you can go off video so that we only listen to you oh. on audio. That may, that may help. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay, go ahead. Is that helping? Yeah. Is it good now? Yes. Okay. So... So that helped me, you know, when you look at it from that angle, the, the home front, what is the relationship between this man and the wife? When you look at it from inside like that, it helps you to see the outside and how this man was able to stand all the pressure through his political life. And there's no how. His, uh, his uh, humanist start side is what... Uh, Gu uh, uh, guided his political life. And all of these are how one is able to dig, dig for that. So for me, 
what is the romantic life of how Awo was the question that led me to um, writing the script. And of course, that again helped in determining the, jo the jury for the, the, the play. Because there's no how you tell an Aulo story without bringing up the wet it is, you know, the Akitolas of this world, the Rosiji of this world. There is no how you tell that story. There is no how you wouldn't touch all those parts. So, but what genre will help us listen to all these stories that we already know without necessarily feeling bad, especially at a time like this. And that was what led to a musical uh, uh, drama. Okay, okay. So, okay, you are confirming now that it's a musical that you're doing. Uh, the, yes. the, the second question I'd like to have, because I'd like the others to ask a uh, further question, is that, you know, unlike Olusha Gomba Sanjo Aremu, yeah. Aremu, I think, in the, imagine, in the imagining of many of us, is a bad guy, is a gangster. <laughs> now, our, our commands different picture in different people. To some of us, it's a sage. Maybe because our father, my father handed our Lord to me as a sage. If I used to tell her that our Lord was in the was moving in the moon, and I had to convince myself that nobody can walk in the moon, and I was banished from the house. But that was something I inherited from my dad, and that's what many of us actually learned about our Lord. We never really, I'm not sure many of us have had the opportunity to interrogate that character. Because when you then listen to some other political actors, when you read some other things that have been coming out, I will also have his own shades. He has his uh, bad, bad, bad guy shade. He has, he has a shade that is questionable. He has shade that some people have shaded. That, I mean, so how, how are you able to navigate these different shades of uh, of a character like Awo? You know, he's not here to, to it's not like a removal can uh, call Professor Yeriba to I heard what you said about me. Awo is not there, only his children can challenge. But go ahead. Hello? Hello, Maki. Oh. Hello, Maki. Uh, for me, this is historical. Yes. Oh, go ahead, please. Go ahead. Who is that man with a heart behind you there, Java? <laughs> it's Mr. Toy Arulogu, my boss. Oh, okay. Don't let him throw me out. Oh, okay, yeah, go on, Makide. Yes. Can you hear me now? Yeah, better. Go on. Okay. For me, it's a historical drama. The history of Awo is not new to so many who came from that age. Even some of us who are who are younger, it's not new. So what, what I have done is to play our side by side is accusers. Oh. It, it's as simple as that. Mm. Tell your story and let them tell their story. The wow. major of all them is Akitola, whom at the point I, as just a battle of ideologies within the same party, which honestly is not, for me, is nothing bad. Probably we, we misunderstood them. So I placed the two opponents side by side and let the people who, who, will, re, who will come to watch judge that story, that confrontation again. Mm. You know, it's like giving us Nigerians those who witnessed the story, those who heard the story, who were not chance to witness it, those who heard the rumor of it, you know, I brought the two of them again and placed them side by side. Okay. okay. And listen to it, reimagine it at the new age, mm. and then tell me. Okay. So if so you did, they uh, were at fault. Yeah, yeah. If they were at fault, any one of them, whether I or Akitola, okay. or if 
The, the audio is really is really messing up. Yeah, I I, I did. It. Thank you. Okay, but, but but we got the sense of it. Oh, so he sorry. said so sorry. he said he played Awo against the accusers. So it's then there for the audience to to decide. Uh, yes, Maki, are you are you in the midst of Riaza? Maybe that's why we're having the noise in the mm. environment. Yes, I stepped out. I'm still in the other hall actually. Oh, but I okay. stepped out of the hall. Okay, okay, okay. Please say where you are currently because the, the audio seems to be clearer now. Uh, okay, I'd like to you. ask uh, those who are in the house. We have directors in the house. We have scholars in the house. We have choreographer in the house. We have the critic. So we have all of them in the house uh, and the and the writer, scholar too. I uh, shall I dare me to any question that you want to take to Makinde? Well, I I would on, I always like to introduce this brother as one who went around the world with uh, Professor Wale Shuenka. I know he's done greater things, but that singular um, opportunity to work with Professor Shuenka directly always stands front and center in, in my mind about him and about how he's developed um, from the days of um, the god of Aruku Shankar. <laughs> Felix Okolo, no one like him, you know. But that was just a preamble. But you see, I, I like the <laughs> the way in which you are attending to to this issue of a man of our stand that you're looking at the home. And I remember that Professor Wale Adebanwi actually wrote a book about HID, our law, and. There were so many dramatic instances there. <laughs> and I had always been saying that if anybody wants to write a story, they should also include the police officer, that the white police, the British police officer that actually went into that household. He was supposed to be implicating Awu and he found nothing. And forever in my life, that man happens to be one character that I would like to see in any um, our production. But I don't know whether you were bothered about the, the time in which he eventually was taking, uh, was it a pair? And, and all the, the 12 disciples that stood by him, the Latif Jaconde, the Ambrose Ali and all of that. I don't know whether they came in to this, um, to this production at all. Well, uh, you see, Awo has got so many interesting parts. Um, if you are not careful as a writer, who is equally going to direct? You may, say, you may find yourself flying in all directions. So the best thing I did was all of those characters, you heard them, but we never see them. You heard them in the piece, but you never see them because I was particularly concerned about the romance between Awu and HID and then okay. other stories that helped to move the story forward. That okay. was paramount to me. Yes, there were a lot of books, even before I started writing, one knew about the story of Awu, you know, before that time. But when the challenge of writing came, I had to go back, start to reread it, I'm putting meaning to what I was reading. And then you will find some other stories that you begin to imagine. Oh, probably this is the reason this came out like this. Probably this is the reason this came out like this. Even down to the, the relationship with, uh, with uh, uh, Ogunde. You know, when Ogunde in his song say, I will, I will, then I begin, but one heard too, that uh, he was a Rasukushia and all of that. And you begin to imagine all of this crossfire mm -hmm. and you tell yourself, okay, there is something to take, right? And the license of a dramatist to take forward those facts and use your own fiction to roll those facts to life. You know, that was important yeah. for me. Thank you very much, Makinde, because we're running uh, out of time. I want to leave the last question to Toin Akinsho. It should be in like one minute and then we'll 
they go out to run. Oh, on mute. On mute. Oh, okay. Yeah. Martin, yeah. Last week, last week at the at the last um, show of RM, you and I were talking about you know what you like, what you are doing, how you challenge the and all that. And then something occurs to me, you know, you I mean um you had already told me that you know a lot of things will be in the dustbin. You know, you have to find a way of arranging the story in a way that makes I mean particular, I mean some significant sense. What I want to ask you is how how does it resonate, you know, stating this at the global hall site of Yoruba Ronu itself? <laughs> how does it resonate to you, with you? I mean, just I, I, how, I mean, how do yeah, you know? okay. Fortunately, I was the I was the one who actually convinced the producer to come to Global Hall without even thinking about all the connection. I just saw that it was newly refurbished and it would be good in there. But as soon as those connections came back to me, ah, this, ah, the, the, then it became, it became very strong, very helpful, because then for me, it's like uh, bringing our to life really so there was the challenge of ensuring that you got those stories um a bit right but not judgmental because okay. i was careful it is important that we don't judge all these uh, past leaders it is important whatever mistakes they made it was genuine they were not mistakes made out of deliberate uh, uh, trying to deliberately punish the masses as we have around us now. And that is the point that is germane to me. It wasn't about the role any one of them played, whether, whether as a villain or as a, no, it wasn't for me. It was about them bringing whatever they had. Because if you listened to Akitola's, uh, Akitola's uh, old this thing, Babati, you find out that it was just an ideology. It's the same as the uh, Republican and Democratic uh, Party in, in, in the US. Those who thought it has to be about the masses and those who thought, look, it has to be about those who have the money to run the state. Mm -hmm. These were the thing. And for me, it became a question. Okay. Is the masses of the Nigerian nation, have we, have we not been the problem for time immemorial? You know? Okay. So bringing yeah. it into, into Global Hall became an important phase of our life, particularly at this time that even politicians be, begin to see it, that it all started here. Well, it all started here. Yeah, thank and you it, very it, much. It's uh, refreshing. Yeah. Thank, thank you very you. much, Makindi. Um, you are on tomorrow and uh, when again, on the 9th? Uh, tomorrow and on the 12th. And on the 12th, okay. So yeah. our will be on. And I think after the presentation of our, we also have an opportunity to review the way we have done to uh, Professor Ahmed Yerima's uh, RMU. And I yeah, think uh, what is more important for us is that these historical figures, these political figures are coming back into our life. If you say our children cannot read those works, at least they can encounter them on stage. That's very, very important. So we thank the Duke of uh, Shomulu for thinking through this kind of product. He's done uh, Oba Ishubayi. You know, he's done so many of those uh, historical characters too. And I think this is the kind of drama that we need to be bringing out now so that uh, young people can start to encounter them. But it's left for me now to just say thank you everybody who has come on Culture Train on Spirit of Nigeria Radio today. We hope that uh, another day we'll be able to bring you back so that we can look holistically at all these productions uh, that are going on on stage. We're just too happy that we are. coming back on stage. Somebody is not hearing me and is uh, giving sign there, but I hope others are hearing me. But thank, thank you very much. It's been culture training and uh, we're selling off.
at this point. I will be seeing you again next week. Thank you. All right, let's just say that um, Prof Professor Yerima, uh, I think you just won a consultancy contract with me. Um, and I will be discussing that later. Uh, Maki de Toyaru Logun, Jerry Arishewo, Kola de Odutola, Godin Okondo, the Cultural Advocate Caucus, Shola de Emi, everybody. Thank you. And see you next week. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Shola, bye. Have a lovely day. Bye. Thank you, everybody. It's good to see everybody. It's good to see you, Professor Yerima. Thank you very much. And good day, good day. Thank you very much. 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 God bless you. All right, then, my All brother. Right, bye, bye bye. Bye bye. 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 bye.